As mentioned at the beginning of the previous video, the two main stresses we'll study for gears are the bending of the teeth and the surface contact stresses, generally called pitting. Today we will focus on those surface compressive stresses and the surface endurance strength terms that I mentioned then. Pitting is a surface fatigue failure caused by the repetition of contact stresses. There are other surface failures like scoring, which is related to lubrication, and abrasion, which is wear caused by foreign material inside the gear system. For surface contact stresses, one of the most common theories we use is the Hertz contact. Depending on the geometry of the parts that come into contact, you can have different expressions to calculate the contact stresses. For example, a tire on a road will deform less or more depending on the weight that the tire is carrying. The increase in the contact area will reduce the pressure that it would otherwise cause on the ground. Of course, this is just an example so that you can picture how a very soft object on a very stiff substrate deforms, causing the pressure or stresses to vary drastically. In the case of gears, their teeth probably have comparable elastic modulus, or at least within the same order of magnitude. And of course, the contact is not between a round cylinder like the tire on a flat surface like the road. In the case of gears, since the profile of the teeth is curved, you can approximate this contact as a cylinder on another cylinder, if you know the radius of curvature at the point of contact between the gear teeth. For different points of contact, you should have different radii of curvature, which means that the cylinders that you would use to model the gear teeth would also have different radius values. Regardless of the values, it is still reasonable to assume the contact is that of two cylinders. The Hertz contact theory has an equation for that scenario, where P max is the largest surface pressure, F is the force pressing the two cylinders together, L is the length of the cylinders, and B is the half width, which can be obtained in terms of the elastic moduli, Poisson's ratios, and cylinder diameters. This contact stress equation makes sense if you look at it as the force over the contact area. For a circular contact area, the expression in the denominator would be pi d squared over 4, and in this case it's pi l times b, similar to the d squared, over 2. If you think about the tire deforming on the road, and again, this is not the same case at all, but it can help you picture where that half width b comes from, you would see that depending on how soft or hard the tire and road are, and how much force is pushing the tire to the road, f, the value for b is gonna change. The force, of course, doesn't only affect the contact area through B, but it also affects the contact stress itself. Let's look at these variables one by one to find what they would be equivalent to within the gear geometry, and not just a generic cylinder. The easiest one to see is the length L. The length of the cylinders in contact would be the face of the gear F, which we talked about during the last video. The force pressing the two cylinders together, which causes a reaction with the same magnitude at the point of contact, would be the full force W, because we know this W force is normal to the surface of the teeth at the point of contact, which is exactly what is pressing the two teeth together. I've mentioned this many many times in past videos, but you usually find the tangential force first. So remember that for example, for a spur gear, the full force would be WT over cosine of phi, the pressure angle. The next variable is the diameter, which is just two times the radius. Not the radius of the gear, of course, but the radius of curvature of the teeth at the point of contact. Now, this value might change as gears rotate, because even though the direction of the force with respect to the gears will not change during rotation, in other words, it always forms a pressure angle with respect to the tangent line at the pitch circle, the location with respect to the tooth does change. Link below for that explanation from a previous video. The point of contact is constantly changing from the moment the teeth make contact to the moment the teeth stop making contact. The maximum wear due to pitting is usually seen at the pitch line. At that point, an approximation of the radii of curvature is found geometrically by looking at the triangle formed by the radius of the gear and the radius of curvature we're trying to find specifically for when the point of contact is located at the pitch line. The hypotenuse would be the radius of the gear, and the opposite side to the pressure angle phi would be the radius of curvature. Therefore, the radius of curvature would be the radius of the gear times sine of the pressure angle. Substituting b in the stress equation first, rearranging the variables, and noting that the diameters over 2 are just the radii, and substituting the force, the length, and the half-width b, 
we find the expression for the surface compressive stress, which needs to be negative because it's compressive. Since the terms that depend on the material of the gears, which are the elastic modulus and the Poisson's ratio values, will have a finite number and more importantly, a short list of possible combinations, as you would probably not made a polystyrene gear with a stainless steel one, the whole term with those variables is taken out of the equation and called the elastic coefficient CP. The reason we do this is to make these calculations easier. Instead of looking up the elastic moduli and the Poisson's ratio values, the American Gear Manufacturers Association, AGMA, has tabulated the results for the elastic coefficient for common combinations of the pinion and gear materials. With the elastic coefficient, and remembering that the modifying factors like the velocity factor we studied during the last video still apply and affect the surface compressive stress, we can write the equation for it in terms of CP, KV, and the gear parameters. For surface fatigue, we don't use endurance limits. Endurance strengths will always depend on the number of cycles. There is a change in slope in the SN curve near 10 to the 6 cycles, but all experiments indicate that the endurance limit does not exist. Due to the rotation speeds of some smaller gears, cycle numbers can easily be in the order of 10 to the 11. What we use as an approximation for the surface endurance strength is a fraction of the hardness of the material. For example, for cast iron, the surface endurance strength would be 32% of the Brinell hardness. If you remember how hardness properties are measured, a strength related to hardness makes sense, since what you're doing is increasing the contact stress by indenting the surface of a hard material with an even harder material, almost infinitely hard, to leave a mark in it and measure the mark's size. The factor of safety is defined as the loss of function load divided by the imposed load, just like the most basic definitions for factor of safety. Since the loads are usually linear with stress, for example, axial load to axial stress. Using strength over stress for the factor of safety is the same as load for failure over imposed load for most cases, but not in this case, since the stress is not linear with the load. For this reason, the factor of safety is defined as SC squared over sigma C squared. Let's look at an example where we want to find the factor of safety for surface fatigue failure of the gear in the gear system we rated for power during the previous main video, link below. The only change we'll make is that the gear is now made out of cast iron instead of the 1020 steel. Everything else will be kept the same. Diametral pitch of 10, 20 teeth for the pinion and 60 teeth for the gear, which we found ourselves, a face of 1.8 inches and the same pressure angle. For a design factor of 2, we found that the system could transmit 10.85 horsepower when the pinion was rotating at 1200 RPM. We also found the radius for the pinion and the radius for the gear. The tangential force that allowed that power transmission, the force that would not cause teeth to bend permanently with the design factor of 2, was found to be 570 pounds. Okay, so to solve for the factor of safety, we need two things the surface endurance strength of cast iron, and the surface contact stress. For the surface endurance strength, we'll use the information of the example I mentioned before. It will be equal to 32% of the Brunel hardness, which we can easily find for cast iron. For the surface contact stress sigma c, we'll need the elastic coefficient cp, the velocity factor kv, the tangential interaction force wt, and the radii of curvature. We know we can find the elastic coefficient either in tables for common combinations of materials, in this case a 1020 steel pinion on a cast iron gear, or just look up elastic moduli and Poisson's ratio for 1020 steel for the pinion and cast iron for the gear. With the values we find, we can calculate the elastic coefficient. We calculated the velocity factor during the previous main video, and we found it to be 1.524. And remember that that value is the same for the pinion and the gear, since it depends on the pitch line velocity of the teeth, which is the same for the teeth of both the pinion and the gear, despite them having different angular velocities. The tangential force had been found to be 570 pounds, and with the radii of the gears, we can find the radii of curvature. Substituting these values, we find that the stress is 81.3 KSI, and the factor of safety is therefore 1.064. In the description of this video, I'll leave you with a link to a design problem where we look at the bending stress at the teeth and the pitting at the same time, so make sure to check that out. 
Even though textbooks contain more information regarding a few other stress types, and most importantly, modifying factors for most of the stresses, similar to the velocity factor kV, and some of which I listed in the previous video, in the next video we'll transition to bearings, as everything we've covered related to gears is more than enough for you to easily understand the remaining concepts related to gear design. For bearings, we'll focus on the selection of appropriate bearings for a shaft and a gear pulley system while touching on some concepts required for bearing design. But since most of you will only work on designing a system and as part of it selecting proper gears, not actually designing them, we'll focus on the selection which still concatenates several of the topics we've covered in this class almost from the beginning. Thanks for watching.